starting at good high. <laughs> okay, so that's in the middle of our, our chit chat there. We are returning to our conversation as uh, we are joined by Minister for Sustainable Development, Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management, uh, Honorable Orlando Habet, and we are talking about the flood assessments that have been done so far. So let's just jump into that since we have you on the line. Yes, certainly. Yes. Um, yes, so we have our ministry which uh, includes within sustainable development um, the ministry of the, the Department of the Environment. We have climate change. Um, we also have the Red Plus program. We have the biodiversity uh, unit. Mm -hmm. We have the forest, forestry department, NEMO, the Met Office, Fire Department, and Coastal Zone Management. So it's a, it's a pretty large ministry, um, not uh, very well funded uh, through the government budget, but plenty of the money that comes to run the, the ministry comes from external funding, and so we have to have uh, very capable personnel who can write programs and proposals to these uh, international uh, financial institutions and NGOs that fund many of the programs and uh, within the department in the ministry. Right. Okay. And um, Minister speaking, um, you're just jumping right into the topic of the recent floods. Um, yes. Can, can we first put it into context and can we get an idea of sort of the scale of um, the uh, effects? Um, and when I say scale, I mean, you know, how many areas or how big an area of the country and how many communities, as roughly, we're speaking about when we think about um, the recent um, flooding that has occurred? Yes, certainly. Um, these floods were really unprecedented. Um, we got um, flooding starting off in the western side with the, the Mopan River, then Kavir Horse, of course, Bully Tree was flooded um, beyond what we had ever seen before, water coming over the, the rails of the, of the bridge of Bully Tree, uh, and the area of Kala Creek uh, was flooded uh, beyond what it had ever seen before. And um, also, we had the problem with um, the waters coming down, and we had uh, the, in San Ignacio, the low-lying bridge, the board bridge, onto Spanish Coast. We had the uh, bridge at Iguana Creek that went underwater, and right down through the River Valley and the Jungle Carl, um, Rowing Creek, uh, river came up, water came up way up to the, the, the new bridge that was uh, recently constructed um, water that joined that area, of course, coming down through the Roaring River, um, on down through the, the River Valley. Um, almost all the communities along the River Valley were flooded. Um, and also we had flooding in the Orange Rock District, in the Corozal District. And so pretty much uh, the west and the north, some flooding in the south also, but not as extensively as it uh, has affected the entire western and northern region of the country. But also, if you can recall, into the Belize district also, we had flooding even uh, weeks after the water even started to recede in the western part of the country. In the Belize district, water was still rising. We had water in the uh, approaching Belize city, mile 8. We had some problems because Water came up from the lagoons, the Burden Canal, and we had problems also in the area, uh, uh, Paradise area. Western the Paradise. new road, mm -hmm. the link road to the airport. Um, for some reason, there was a significant problem in that area. That uh, road had a section where it sort of created sort of a dam, and then water came over the, the, the road and flooded all that area around mile five yeah. into the growing boom area and water from the watershed in Kukuchi started to come um, this way towards the the, the, the the east, the south, into the growing boom area and trying to enter into the um, Halova Creek. And so um, it 
was, as we have heard from the hydrology unit, there were some areas where the river uh, rose 27, 29 feet in height, mm -hmm. and it was really unprecedented. Wow. Um, today, we still have um, problems because even though the water is receding, we still have a few days in which the water um, in the Belize uh, River Valley area is still, um, while it's going down, but the water has spread out to some entire uh, large areas. Mm -hmm. As the, the latest hydrology report tells us that there's still flood warning uh, for mm -hmm. streams and creeks and waterways in the Belize River, including uh, areas in Banana Bank, the Run, Crooked Sea, Nathan, Lemonal, others are villages in the River Valley, Flowers Bank, Scotland Half Moon, Lucky Strike, Royal Boom, and of course, down, downstream to the coast. So there's still some flood warning. Um, yesterday we got a little bit of rain, that didn't affect much, but the waters have commenced to recede. In the north, the Rionda is still above its banks, but it is receding. The New River, even though above normal levels, also continues to recede according to the hydrology um, department. Um, and in the Cairo district, the, the Makal River is almost down to normal in, the, in that portion coming into San Ignacio. The, the line which is already uh, in use. But the Mopan River that comes from Bento, like uh, goes into Guatemala and comes back, that is going down a little bit slower, so that one will stay a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the report also tells us that the Coquitri uh, the Lagoon, the causeway still remains inundated as flood levels continue to receive slowly. You know? And mm -hmm. likewise, the Tribune River uh, uh, is also receding, and, um, but uh, some of that water has been entering the uh, in close to Belize City along uh, mile five, mile two in the close to Belize City. So um, it is, we had a lot of water. We had those yeah. two major uh, hurricanes that passed close to us and filled uh, 22, 25 inches of rain. So um, it was a lot of rain in a short yeah. period of time. Now, from what you from what you've gotten so far in your reports, what what were the worst affected areas of the country? I mean, where are you seeing the the most costly damage? Whether it's to uh, homes and structures, agriculture, what are we facing? Well, um, we got a lot of uh, damage, of course, um, in the Kala Creek area. People had to be evacuated. Uh, there was a lot of damage to Kala Creek. Some houses uh, went underwater. We had pictures where people were on top of their house. They had to be rescued by the uh, people who uh, were with but mainly with the, with the big lift personnel and the Coast Guard personnel. Um, Bulletry area also had some highly affected areas. Um, not only homes, but also their, their, their plantations were affected. Uh, down uh, through the, the, the river valley, um, a lot of agriculture areas were affected. Um, I don't know if you saw pictures, but uh, there was even some evacuation of cattle in the Bay area. Yes. Some 300 yeah. cattle had to be evacuated. The Mennonites from the Creek assisted and got the cattle out. Mm -hmm. Sheep had to be uh, evacuated. Um, in the Belize city area, the Lama areas, I think, is one, two, three, four, all of those areas were affected. Um, we had to get the assistance from the BDS and the and the um, Coast Guard and also the uh, Belize City team of the, the uh, emergency management organization of the city had to come into the to assist. Also in the north, um, villages like Douglas, San Roman, San Antonio, uh, Santa Cruz, and Santa Marta, uh, these areas got affected, uh, water went into the homes. Um, we have pictures where uh, within one home, it was like three, four inches of mud. So uh, there was a lot of damage to property, also to the agriculture sector. Has, has and of course, the, another big one was damage to the infrastructure because of course. Uh, many streets and roads, farm roads. Uh, Are going to require a lot of... Um, Repair, yes. yes, I've seen that. 
So, Minister, uh, the question is, of course, that there has to be an assessment done um, on all the damage. Where are we on the damage assessment report so far? Um, up to last week, um, there were preliminary assessments because, if you recall, the um, an emergency, a disaster emergency had to be declared mm -hmm. um, because of all the damages and, and, and the loss. Um, mm -hmm. When you combine the damages of agriculture, um, housing, uh, infrastructure, the preliminary estimates last week were up to $150 million. Um, and I, I say up to them because the damages, the entire damages has not been assessed because we're still waiting for the waters to recede in the Belize River Valley area and some areas in the north. Mm -hmm. So we believe that they will climb a few million dollars more. Uh, in terms of uh, the cost and for repairs and everything else. Mm. So that's, um, that's the preliminary report. When will we get the, the final report on, on um, the full damage assessment? Um, every week, the, the, the NEMO does part of it through the, the, um, the Housing and Shelter Committee, the... Um, the yeah. infrastructure part comes through the Ministry of Infrastructure and Works, and then we combine it together to do a report to Cabinet. Um, so this week, hopefully, we'll get another report as the water is received and, and the, the assessment continues. But we believe that um, if it takes another eight or ten days for the water to recede in the Belize uh, River Valley area and we can get in to do a complete assessment, then hopefully by the next weekend we should have something um, almost 100%. Okay. And do we have, um, again, just putting it into further perspective, do we know um, sort of the number of, uh, let's say, people and livelihoods that have been affected? Because we know that um, we, had, we had a conversation, of course, with the Minister for Agriculture last week and uh, speaking about uh, the impact to, um, um, you know, the farming and agriculture industry. So do we also know um, a little bit of uh, livelihoods and, and, and amount of people that have been affected in these different communities? Yes. Um, we have uh, an assessment based on especially looking at the, the work that NEMO had to do with assisting families. Um, up to the first week of December, we had some 2,800 persons who had to be assisted, uh, up to 575 families. Mm -hmm. um, and we had this spread out throughout the country. So we had um, families in each of the, of the villages in, in the various districts. But we were looking at somewhere close to 5,000 families that were, that were affected. And, um, um, and Minister, the, the, the first um, few figures, um, just to be clear, um, were you, um, families needing assistance were, um, are we speaking about people who actually had, have been displaced because of the mm -hmm. floods and maybe have had um, either loss or ex extreme damage to their homes? Yes. Um, the assessment through the uh, Rescue and Supplies Committee of NEMO, which also includes the people who work uh, there and um, are in charge from the Ministry of Human Development, um, we made assessments of not only the, the, the needs of in, in, in regards to food supplies because they can't come out of the house or they have to be at a, at a shelter or they have to be at someone else's house, um, but also of some of the household supplies that, that were, were, were lost. And of course, um, you're looking at refrigerators, um, small freezers, stoves, uh, in some cases, people's televisions, everything that's underwater. Mm -hmm. um, the government of Belize uh, initially has allocated $2.8 million to assist uh, these people with uh, trying to get at least one item out of two or three if they, if they lost any. And through NEMO committee, we started um, last week uh, in the Cairo area, and then we're moving on to the district. But um, doing uh, through the assessment and seeing exactly what people uh, lost, um, we can't give them everything, but we're giving them at least one uh, item that was lost, either a small fridge, a small stove, or something like that. Mm. Um, but it was spread, it, it, is, it is very expensive. 
Look, we were lucky also to have uh, the assistance from various uh, organizations in terms of food supply. We got some assistance from Taiwan, the Red Cross, DEL also contributed, uh, Italy. Uh, we have uh, Mexico, Brazil, uh, Cuba, who have been helping us with food supplies. Uh, Brazil is still to come in, but they already uh, promised that we, I think by the end of this week we'll have some water and food. Um, the offices of the Foreign Disaster Assistance of the United States also came in uh, at UNDP. Um, also, the International Organization for Migration also assisted. UNICEF was out last uh, weekend assisting yeah. along with Red Cross, and we had some assistance from BNE, and um, we're supposed to be getting a, a small assistance also from the Caribbean Development Bank. Mm -hmm. So we have had some assistance, and that also doesn't even include um, locally. We have some churches that come up with 100, 200. Yesterday, we got an assistance from one church for 450. Um, bags of food mm -hmm. and so what we are trying to do right now is to try to give the people who are most in need who can still can't come out of uh, the shelters or areas where they have been staying and um, trying to supply them at least with uh, bi-weekly uh, supply of food um, we don't know exactly how long this will go but we know that those who are mostly affected might be getting up to the end of December maybe early part of January so how many people are still in shelters at this time um, not many in shelters anymore. Uh, most people have um, gone out of the shelters. Uh, some were in the in private homes, in family okay. homes. So I don't believe we have many people left in shelters right now. But they're, they're displaced from their homes. Yes, yeah. that's right. Now, when you when you look at at the relief um, efforts that are being made at this time. You, you pointed out that there's a collaborative effort between uh, several NGOs, uh, some foreign assistance has come in as well, and churches have also participated. Talk about yeah. the, the, um, the efforts that are being made to coordinate along with the other ministries as well. As you clearly noted, uh, the relief effort is looking at uh, individuals in their home, um, and it's also looking at the infrastructure uh, needs as well. So what's, what's the collaboration that's taking place there? Well, we have the uh, various ministries who um, are involved. As you know, the, the head of NEMO is the prime minister. Then we have a cabinet subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Then we have the person of NEMO who, who um, is in charge of the coordination. Um, we have various uh, groups, subcommittees, including the housing and shelter, we have the rescue committee. And I must mention that um, we have had a real good participation and assistance from the police. We have had, uh, of course, the BDF and, um, and the Coast Guard. And I must mention at this point that sometimes we overlook the services of these people, but um, they put their lives at risk at every moment. Um, getting people out of, of, of uh, situations where, in a way, they put themselves in because they didn't get out in time. Um, we're looking at how we can really push forward the issue of mandatory evacuation when it is time to come out and you still have daylight and everything else so that you do not put uh, these officers at, at peril because we also have families that they have to take care of. Mm -hmm. But they were really, really um, supportive. Um, so I want to thank all of, uh, all of these um, uh, departments who came in to assist of course, human development with the preparation of the food bags and the distribution. And NEMO has its, um, its coordinators in all the districts so, and, and their workers who uh, get the food from the donors, put it into their warehouses, and from there, based on the assessment that they have done and the means that they have, they do the distribution uh, so as, what's, as soon as, as, as they can get their hands on food. So what's the greatest uh, needs at this point? What are what, what you've spoken about going in and working with families and, and offering them at least one appliance and uh, ensuring that some of the aid gets to them, whether it's household or cleaning supplies. What is the next phase of, of the recovery efforts? I believe that um, for 
for those who um, have lost a uh, portion of their home and need repairs, that is one area that we will have to address. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to see how we can get funding for those. Um, we have some people who uh, might not be able to get in right away because of the extensive damage in Orange Rock. Uh, we have in Santa Marta, we had a picture from a home where there was more like four or five inches within the house. So that has to be clean. I also must mention, for example, in the area of uh, Cala Creek and, and Bolichi, the Mennonite community from Spanish Coast came in with uh, church members and they came with um, water pumps and, and uh, power washing machines to clean out the, the, the buildings and, and homes. So that's still ongoing. Um, one of the things that we really have to work on quickly is the infrastructure because a lot of the streets and roads are really uh, in a dire situation for, for repair. Um, they're really bad. It, it affects communication and travel, so it's, 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 um, it's something that we have to address. The government has allocated some money to the Ministry of uh, Infrastructure, and they have started to work, but part of the problem that we have is that uh, coming into government, we found out that there's no equipment at the Ministry of Works and so most of the work that has to be done has to be hired, has to be contracted out. Mm-hmm. But certainly, we will also have to look at uh, at least a short-term supply of food and water and cleaning supplies mm-hmm. for these people who have been affected, and um, at least the worst ones, no? because um, I believe in the Cairo area, and maybe up north, some people will get over the, the situation quicker, quicker, quicker. But in the River Valley area, we might have some villages that will be affected for a longer period of time because the water is still in their area uh, yeah. currently. Yeah. And in relief for the agricultural sector? Um, yes. The, we, we believe that um, through the Ministry of Agriculture, um, the government will have to put their, their part. But I think Minister Mai mentioned that also the uh, government is uh, seeking out assistance uh, from external sources to assist mm-hmm. these farmers. A uh, lot of the, of the year, men, uh, a great part of the area that was affected will not be able to be prepared, you know, because uh, it's, it got waterlogged. And so we have to wait until these uh, lands are dry enough so that uh, machinery can go in and start plowing and tilling the soil for, for preparation of, of the, mm-hmm. for, the, for the next planting season. Normally, November is the month where most farmers are planting beans mm-hmm. so they can harvest in, uh, in March and April. And also, it's a time when mm, almost 50, 60% of the potatoes are, are planted so that you could also harvest in the early part of the year. So, all these have to be, um, we have to wait some more time. And so, we suspect that next year we'll have a shortage of some of these, um, of these products like bean potatoes, local potatoes. And um, Minister, I also wanted to ask you, given um, that you, your portfolio is wide enough to include um, things like disaster risk management and also looking at things like climate change, I am wondering if the assessment will also take into consideration things that will need to be in place moving forward, because as we know, we're going to have a rainy season next year, mm-hmm. we're going to have um, another hurricane season. Um, and you also, and you had mentioned some things um, that you had gone through that um, had been uh, revealed um, in the um, early stages of your um, of the assessment. Speaking about, I, I believe it was the air, the Link Road or the John mm-hmm. Smith Road creating a dam um, in in what was in what would uh, be a runoff area. Um, and uh, you're looking at other areas. So I'm wondering if um, the assessment takes into account um, what some of what needs to be done for the future, even though it's still early days. And if you could share any of um, those sorts of plans or anything that may be in the works um, moving forward. Yes, certainly. Um, immediately what is being done right now through the uh, Ministry of uh, Infrastructure, they are assessing that area where the water has stayed for a long time to see uh, what is the best way to of that problem to get the water out from this side, from one side of the um, of the road, uh, especially in that area by Boone, where the water can go across the, the highway and 
and so enter itself into the into the, into the sea and then the ocean. Um, we're looking at the Halova Creek, the Halova Bridge. Um, what we have been told is that we are looking at the possibility of dredging uh, both the entrance and the exit because the entrance um, is filled up with silt and mud, and so that allows the water to it sort of form the bottleneck, and so then the water spreads all over. And then on the exit side, of course, from the ocean, when you have high tide, it brings, out, brings back silt and sand, and then that uh, affects the, the way water flows out. So all that is being looked at. Um, but from my ministry level, what we have uh, already uh, commandeered is that we are going to make uh, form a new task force to the various ministries that can be involved. As you mentioned, hydrology, um, um, Ministry of Works, uh, our, our ministry, and looking at a new assessment for flood for, for prone areas and doing an entire new disaster risk assessment because this one went beyond what we had and what we knew. Um, we also have within my ministry a small department sponsored by the uh, government of Taiwan. They are looking at some hydrology uh, issues. They have some sensor units at um, in tree in um, at San Ignacio at both bridges. And so they are looking at studying the effects of the of the, of the waters, but also trying to see if they can come up with an early warning system for flooding. And so um, we believe that within the first 100 days of this administration, we'll have at least a first draft of that uh, new assessment, and then we'll fine tune it so that we can have it ready uh, to work with before the next rainy season. All right. Well, we appreciate the update this morning and being able to hear the extent of the damage. As, as you clearly noted, preliminary numbers are suggesting $150 million uh, worth of damages, and it's most likely going to increase as it wasn't um, taking into account right up to the end. And we you know some areas are still flooded. Uh, Minister, of course, we, we, we thank you for sharing this information with us and letting us know the status of, of the recovery uh, efforts and updates and uh, of course we wish you the best stay safe out there thank you very much and just before i leave i just want to again want to thank all those uh, organizations and individuals churches that have contributed largely and selflessly to our efforts to helping our needy people mm -hmm. and also to all those ministries and staff members from the various departments who really put themselves out there to assist uh, our needy people in those times of, of most need. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, right, too. Thank you. Right. And, uh, of course, that was uh, the Honorable uh, Minister Orlando Habet, who is the Minister um, for Disaster Risk Management and NEMO, um, giving us an update in relation to the um, effects of the recent flooding that has been caused by hurricanes Iota and um, Eta. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to thank him for um, giving us that update. Um, but we are now going to be taking a short break and when we come back we are going to be having our wrap up so please stay tuned.